Do you think it badly dented your reputation? And have you ever recovered from it? Oh, I've never recovered, no. Right. I never will. Before I even got interviewed, the only reason I got the job is because Gareth turned it down. Is that right? Yeah. He told me so. I, I asked him to take me 12 games before that. I rang up Angus and said, I'll save you. No young manager, and I feel really sorry for him, yeah. no young manager can perceive to play anything other than tippy-tappy. Right. And it's some of the worst football I've seen in my life. This is Up Front with me, Simon Jordan. I believe there are a lot of vacuous, uninformed, unchallenged opinions out there. I want to get to the bottom line and cut through the nonsense. So with this podcast with William Hill, I'm going to get people with strong views who think they can stand them up to proper scrutiny. There's a good chance I might learn something along the way. And more importantly, so might you. Joining me in today's episode, someone with over 50 years' experience in football, most recently in the Leeds United dugout. Only Harry Redknapp, David Moyes, Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger have managed more Premier League games than him. He challenged the elite whilst being branded a long ball specialist, a dinosaur <laughs> and even a revolutionary along the way. Sam Allardyce, welcome to Upfront. Great to be here. Nice to see you, Sam. Last time I saw you, um, uh, you and I did a little piece um, with Graham Soonis. Yes. Yes. Where you two ganged up on me because you didn't like my <laughs> observations about what an interfering can, owner looks like. Yeah, we might gang up here. We could hardly win. Oh, I don't we? know about that, mate. I don't know about that. Um, Sam, w one of the things that we do uh, in this show when we're talking to people of your caliber is try and establish a little bit about them, what yes. makes them and what defined them and what their journey was. So as much as it sort of irks me, this moniker, I'm going to start with it. Big Sam. I quite liked it, to be perfectly honest Did with you. you. Yeah, I thought that... It, if, you t if you're being, in terms of, not that I knew then, but in terms of being a brand, you know, if you mention that name, everybody will probably know, which is certainly who watches football or knows football. I mean, actually, before that, the Bolton Wanderers fan, fans actually used to do, call me Super Sam Bionic Man because right. in that era, uh, that was a series, the Bionic Man, course, Steve Austin. Lee Majors. Lee, Lee Majors. So... They must have seen something about the way I was running or the way I was committed, I think, because I was a centre half. Yeah. So I'm you mean not 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 um, played at the top level, but you know I wasn't. I was a defender. Yeah. I was a proper defender. Yeah. I was a, a I was a, in it. many ways destroyer of football yeah. rather than actually player of football. So, but to actually be beloved by your fans and be given a name is like an honour mm -hmm. in 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 our world. You know what I mean? So. From there, and then obviously uh, moving on, I kept I kept that when I went into management, particularly, it sort of stayed with me, sort of, you know, Shrevesy and and you know Andy Gray and people like that who knew me would actually, if they were on the mm -hmm. telly, would say, "Well, we'll go up to see what Big Sam's got to say at the Reebok, like you mean." And do, but do you think like it's that. a kind of moniker? Because I I said to you when we went last time round, and I sort of said it tongue in cheek which is I, I have difficulty in taking seriously someone who actually refers to himself as Big Sam. <laughs> right? But do you think that by that sort of denotion that it's put you in a category I, or enabled people to pigeonhole you in a certain way because it comes with a physicality rather than an intellectual approach? You got your p persona. Yeah. My persona is six foot three, yeah. big, strong, Strapping aggressive. Yeah. And that comes with a... A comes of a perception, connotation. the perception yeah. that you are, are are nothing like what you actually are. Yeah, you're one dimensional. Yeah. You're, you're all about your and physicality. Then, and then that look... evolves into into coaching and management, where he's 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 a dinosaur. He's old school. He's yeah. so you we have to, or I have to, in many ways, null that perception or. Or downsize that perception. The one, the one thing I never downsized. But you've embraced it, though, didn't you? Yeah, you, I embra you embraced yeah. it. Well, I, no, I embraced the long ball stuff. Right. Like took it on the chin. No, but you embraced the perception of people calling you Big Sam, because in, in my mind, it, yes, pig it yeah. pigeonholes you a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. in the times that I've spent with you, and and as I've said to you previously in other spaces, you were the first one of the first guys that I met when I first bought Palace. Yeah. And I never forget. The fact that you were sitting, you were standing in the in the in the um, tunnel leading out to Sellers Park, having a fag, yeah. um, and you and I had a chat, yeah. and it was the approachability, 
and um, the discussion I had with you was with someone that was intellectually far more compelling than people were being led to believe that you were. Yes. So I, I, I wondered if by embracing it, it enabled you to be pigeonholed and enabled you, because I know you get cross about, and we'll talk about the long ball stuff and all of the way that people make allegations about your brand of football. But when you look back on it, do you think maybe I should have pushed back against that narrative? Maybe the Andy Grays and the Richard Keys were all a bit boisy at the time and yeah. it was all a bit fun to have, but maybe I didn't want to be perceived that way. I mean, perhaps I wasn't, uh, I was more focused on, on winning football becoming matches. a good, yeah. good manager and yeah. showing everybody that I could get to the top and have an ambition to play at the highest level and manage at the highest level. And I think that probably, you know, that, that wasn't in the forefront of my mind when I was driving on to, and, and to make every club I was at as good as it could possibly be. And that is, there can't be a distraction Mm -hmm. If you're going to be successful on what people call you or what people say or what people, what people judge are outside yeah. in, in, in the white noise. Yeah. And unfortunately, the white noise is far greater now with social media and much mm -hmm. more damaging than it's ever been before. But, you know, that's what we all have to deal with if you're going to be in this game. But, uh, yeah, there's many times that that you would have changed or said maybe I would have you know, nullified that a bit more or said, look, this is this is who I really am. Um, but we kept, a, a, unlike today, we kept a more closed door secrets as we were building and going forward rather than being a bit more open right. than we, we generally are what now. What do you mean by that? Well, we, what we tried to do... Everything stayed in the inside. It stayed thing. in house. Yeah. And we didn't want to let it out because right. we were being inventive in terms of what we were creating and I was having to find those creative people with the right credentials to evolve us and evolve me. Mm -hmm. They evolved me as much as I evolved them and led them. Yeah. They, they, I'm talking about the Bolton days more than anything yeah, yeah. else now. Yeah. The quality of the staff that we chose and picked in terms of a, a level of high quality coaching a high quality academic side from lads from university that wanted to get into football and then put them in the positions of analysis, sports science, strength and condition, diet, nutrition, psychology, yeah. put, marrying all that together was the, the probably, probably at that time, but after the long road to get there, probably after the time was probably the greatest satisfaction I ever felt in football. Because obviously the best satisfaction is you can't beat playing, mm -hmm. but when you achieved achieve that 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 ultimate goal to to go where you've got that team and the way we got it there, and and I sit at the top taking most of the praise, but really it was about all of us. If you if you look back on it and we've we're reflecting on it for this moment, I'm oh, I'm ruminating on it. it. Would you have preferred people to stop referring to you as that? So that it didn't give other people an opportunity to put you in a box, or I'm, did it really not bother you? I didn't. It's like a lot of things outside of the internal happenings. The focus on on the, the, there were obvious, obviously the media lads. Head of media was hugely important and even more important now mm. than ever before than giving you an heads up on stuff like that. And then, and if, if I ever felt at any stage that that was becoming a disadvantage, a disadvantage, more a disadvantage yeah. or anybody that was close to me, like particularly my wife said, you've got to get, you've got to t stop and keep calling you that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then perhaps I would have, I would have taken a, a bit more notice, but mm. nobody actually ever, ever, somebody mentions it to me, puts a seed in my mind and it might grow. And I go, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I need that's to why I had the stuff here, but nobody yeah. ever really said that to me, like, like, like you put it. You know what I mean? So maybe, maybe it was something I missed, maybe not. But you know. But if there was an element of, of being able to change people's perception of you, which part would you want to change? I'm not sure it's, I can change my DNA. It because it, some of it comes out on an instinctive basis and is uncontrolled, right? Because it's part of me. Um, 
So I think it comes from dyslexia probably as a kid. Yeah. It yeah, yeah, brings you yeah. lots of challenges, certainly in my time, because it wasn't diagnosed yeah. in my school yeah. years. And I became extremely fearful about the mickey taking that comes your way if you can't spell, mm -hmm. you can't read as well as the others. Yeah. And that moves on, that moves on from not just your school years when you go into football and it can come even worse yep. in terms of once they fight. So you're very good at disguising that, but I mean, so, but then as time goes on and as you use your other learning skills by listening and watching and, 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 and absorbing what people are saying, particularly if they, they grab your attention, mm -hmm. then you move on from that. And then obviously, thank God for predict a word and so on and so forth. So, right. you know, way back in the, in the early days, it would be di difficult for me to be, be writing on a flip chart, you know, well, this and this, cause the lads are going, Oh, we can't even spell mm. that. Like you mean? So, you know, but I do think that's probably listening to all the science behind it and all what's happened in over many, many years. I, I might have gained a really good advantage cause of that. Mm. Because there are a lot of people who are very successful and very wealthy who are, absolutely who say themselves that they are absolutely. dyslectic. So perhaps it hadn't been as big a burden as I thought it might have been, but it was a challenge. But given the scale, I mean, obviously this builds up a character in you, and I, I actually believe, and I'm sure you probably do as well, that out of challenges and adversity comes character, right, and backbone yeah. and integrity, mm. and from those things comes leaders. Mm -hmm. The thing that follows you, and follows you repeatedly. And I don't know, honestly, how fair it is at times, but mm. there's a common denominator, and it's you, and it's reverberated at a number of football clubs, which is this characterization of the brand of football that you play. Mm. Um, you've got this this denotion of, of a long ball merchant yeah, uh, and the dinosaur mm. mentality. Mm. And you've said it yourself. Um, in a, in a quote, which I don't know when you, when you actually made it, but it says, in all honesty, I'm frustrated that I didn't challenge that tag, tag early enough. Correct. Because it halted the development of my career. Yeah. And then you've got this um, observation, and I saw it at West Ham, and I think I spoke to you at West Ham, because you'd, obviously you'd taken them back up from the championship, mm. right? But you've got this common denominator, a series of football clubs at, at Everton, mm. at West Ham. Mm. Um, I think they mentioned Newcastle. it at Newcastle yeah. as well. Mm. Um that all of the fans, well, not all of the fans, that's, that's bullshit, that's not fair to say, but the a, small a, a significant that their voice proportion heard. of them yeah, make yeah, their yeah, voices yeah. heard, all yeah. went after you mm. on, on the style of play. Yeah. Can you, can, you, can you top and tail that for me and give me your version of why you think that's been stuck with you and why it doesn't seem to be something that you can shift? Because you've got two now, haven't you? You've got... He's a long ball merchant and mm. antiquated, and and he's a fireman now. The fact of the matter is, being successful when people thought, "How can you do that with that team?" Right, right. So, a lot of it came from journals, and most of them hadn't even watched it. Right, but it it and it came and it stuck. So. And a lot of it came from managers who I turned over. Right. Who got upset. Yeah, we'll get on to Wenger in a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, so, yeah. It, so that's where, so when it was promoted by the manager after the game, the press would love it, and that's yeah. where I should have shot it down. But, but, but the fans are buying into it, aren't they? Well, I the mean, there must, there must be something in it, Sam. I mean, I, mean I, I look at some of the players that you've had, um, and there's been creative play, specifically mm. uh, for, for, for the purpose of this conversation, the JJ Acochas uh, um, at um, uh, Bolton and the Ivan Campos and a few other players that weren't just your basic go back to front merchants. Obviously, you had the big boy up top, um, Kevin the, Davis. Kevin yeah. Davis, right? Mm. Um, but there must be, it can't just be an unfair tag. I know it probably gets up your nose, but there, well, if you've got four or five clubs saying it, right? But yeah, in the end, though, Simon, like but, but, but Simon in the end, this, the Bolt Wanderers side was never that in the end. The last three years was some of the purest football you could play. But, but then move on from but no, Bolton, nobody, move, move nobody, on to Everton. And yeah, move but, on to well, West but Everton, Ham. Everton was, was, your job is about, about how good your team is. Yeah. 
Well, so that's, so that's my job, the my job, job is yeah. how good my team is, like yeah. you mean. So if you want me to carry on playing like Ronald Coleman, yeah, and go concede twenty eight goals in eight games, yeah. and get relegated, then because you're playing tidy, but that's a different for, argument, Sam. You know what I mean? But that's a different you'll argument. You'll do that if you get the team, and you look at the team, and you say. This team is only good enough to play like this. It's a practical view yeah. on getting the getting the best players you've got to play to their strengths in the position and the system that gets your results right now. Which I agree with. That 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 cannot be cannot be like expansive the perception open, now, yeah. and it's gone worse now. Right. I mean, the media media have made it worse now that no young manager, and I feel really sorry for him. Yeah. No young manager can perceive to play. Anything other than tippy tappy, right? And it's some of the worst football I've seen in my life. Some of the most boring football I've seen in my life. The Premier League has suffered from it because everybody, and not only that, it's gone down all the leagues. Right. Managers are getting sacked because they're not playing the right type of football. Mm. And what is the right type of football? I think it's winning football, personally. Correct. <laughs> but, but, so do we all, but, but now it's not. Yeah. It's not winning football. It's it's obviously playing what everybody perceives to be the right way. And I see more goals conceded by playing out from the back than I ever see. I agree. Than I ever see from anything I else. You yeah. Know. And I Manchester agree. City, you know, love you doing it. Because mm. Manch the, the, the best defenders at Manchester City of the front six because they win the ball back more than the back four does and then go and score. So, so Thomas Frank, who, who, if you like, uh, and this is no disrespect to what he does because I love it, mm. played a long ball against Manchester City away, right? And no one said anything about it. Nobody said, oh, apart from brilliant. Right, because it overcome Man City. And it, it, because they couldn't cope. Mm. Every ball onto Ivan Tony, knock down, flick on, knock down, flick on, goal, goal. And obviously in between that, there's a lot of really good defending. Mm -hmm. So in that particular, and, and it's, it's like in that particular day, he wants his team to play like that. And that's so, what, that, so what you, if you evolve in football, you know, you go to Chelsea and play nobody up front with Crystal Palace and win 2-1. Does anybody say that's Next great done. tactic? Is anybody okay, say well, let me, that? Let, you know what I mean? Let me reposition, so, let me reposition the question. I've never played the same right. anywhere. I didn't. I don't. I, Jermaine Defoe up front for Sunderland. Sunderland, yeah. So how how did I play long ball? Mm. But it's still. Yeah. It, so it never it was never. But it's never. Well, it, it's affected my career. I know that. But it's never affected me doing my management job going forward. It's just. It's just. I had to accept many many years ago. It's never going to change. But is Never. it is it is it is it well you can change perceptions, Sam. You can change perceptions, but would it be would it be that your style of management is pragmatic? Yes, I would and, and realistic. Yeah. So if you were having your utopian world, mm. right, with a, you know, a, a litany of clubs mm. that you've had, mm. and one of the things that could be said about you sometimes is that you've been in the right place at the wrong time. Um with, with, with Newcastle, and we'll talk about Absolutely, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But if you were having your utopian world of, of being able to play football the way you would want to, what would it look like? Because if the accusation is pragmatic, well, right? People don't want pragmatic anymore. They've got this ambitious idea that everyone's got to play in a certain way, and that, and, and and I think the media don't help with that. But I also think we are where we are, right? And that may well be people getting their jobs lost on the back of that bullshit. But it's where we are. If you were sat here with a blueprint of saying, this is the way, if I could play, this is how I would play, what would that look like? What would it look like? It would look like the the, the way that we're capable of playing with that particular team, like we did at Bolton in the last three, four years. Once we got Nicholas and Elka, yeah. there was probably the last, the last piece in the jigsaw. <clears throat> and everybody else around him in... in and some some of these lads are world class talent, Simon. Of course, they're not better. They, you know, but it's also been... about in heart. Everything's, so everything's relative, isn't it? We right? used to say, we used to say, right, lads, we'll go through this now. And they used to say, well, we don't need that gaffer now because we know what you want. Yeah. And I go, yeah, okay then, that's fine, lads. So off we go. You go, you go, you. you we all know how we can play all each other. So 
the coaching becomes less, Simon. The, yeah. the, 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 the quality of the players. Yeah, the better the player, less and, the and, and yeah. everybody used to say, like when I bought them in the first place, mercenaries, why is he buying them? The, 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 they've just come for the money. Mm. They're too old. Well, most of them were under 30 yeah. to start with. And most of them would not want to come and embarrass themselves because of their own personal goals yeah. and reputation that we managed to pick. Now, we what made was, it... What was Anelka like? Oh, he um, was... It, by the time we'd... By the time we had... Uh, or I'd convinced him to join us, yeah. which was... Because he was a talent, right? Yeah, a huge talent. talent. Yeah. And, and, and I don't mind a bit of... You know, Maverick, bit of difficulty. But yeah. we always said... As long as on the field performance outweighs the difficulty we might yeah. have with him, but to my surprise, he'd grown up. All right. He'd matured. How'd you get him to come to Bolton? He, he met. I met him twice, Charles de Gaulle Airport, right. and said, "Like you know, we're gonna, we're gonna bring you back to the Premier League. You're gonna do great from us, and then we're gonna sell you on." As soon as once at Newcastle, because that's what we do. Yeah. You know, what a year at Bolton, even though we're a good team. In fact, you might like us that much, you might want to stay. Might want to stay a bit longer, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, which is what most of them did, you know. So, so because he's in a good team. He looked at the team and saw Yuri York, FJ, Jacocci, yeah. Fernando, Yero, Ivan, Campo, people, Stalios, Jufi, people like that, and went, this is a good team. He must this. have been a handful, Juf. Oh, yeah, Jufi's all right, yeah. Mm. Calls me dad. Does he? Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? So a bit of delicate handling. Again, you know what I mean? And a, a few problems, but one, ones that were never, apart from you, never justified the spitting. But, you know, all of the other stuff was mis more mischievous yeah. than it was like, you know, like outrageous, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, I mean, you know, Nicholas was the, was the man that, the man that, a bit like Jermaine Defoe, mm. different types of players, but they didn't miss more than one chance. Right. If they got two, they scored one. If they got two, they might score two. But rarely miss, rarely miss two out of three. I'm going to go back to the long ball thing and the, mm. and the characterisation of it. When Rio Ferdinand was discussing Con Tottenham under Conti, towards the end of Conti's debacle, they've become a set-piece set team, haven't they? The best in the league at set-paces. Have they got Tony Pulis or Big Sam back in the face somewhere? When you hear that, does it? What, what do you think? Do you think I call for you, or do you think? <laughs> well, or do you think? All I, gonna... I could say, all I could say is that, like, all the punters today, all the punters today, have to keep the job, don't they? Oh, you've been pundits, yeah. Yeah. Right. And the way they keep the job is is like everybody wants now. Right. Criticism. Right. They don't want criticism's okay, as long as it's fair. Yeah, right? yeah, but, yeah, but a lot of it's not constructive, is it? No, because it makes it it makes a reaction that people want or have, or have been brainwashed into from, you know, from so the from the press playing into a stereotype it, into the an easy into win. the radio and the yeah. media. Like, no, look at what, me when you say that. By the way, what controversy can I talk about to make myself more relevant. popular and yeah. relevant? And that's what the and listen, they need the job. They need to do it. That's fine. And I like doing it, but I don't need it. But I like doing it. You know what I mean? But I try but is not to be. It's plain speaking. Okay, because you, you don't like this narrative. But it's plain speaking, because I don't. Whether you agree with what I say or don't, I don't say th when I'm doing the media stuff. No. I don't say stuff to get a reaction from people. I couldn't no, give no, a monkey's no, well, what people well, think. I don't take I, you as like that. I, but I say it lot, because I believe I'm it. Not, and if I'm wrong, I'll yeah, get but corrected. You're, more, you're better, more mature, knowing what it's going. All the ones who are coming through now. You know, who were, you know, talking about managers should get sacked and, you know, it's a disgrace that they did this or it's a disgrace, you know, using those words. Yeah. In fact, actually, talk sports have been pulled up on it by the FA, PLMA, I mean. Oh, that must have really concerned them. You know what I mean? So, so they've had a response to say that they will try better, whether they do or whether they don't. But that's not so much. Well, go, yeah, because Moisey said that to me. I saw, I saw you know Moisey. I saw Moisey about two or three months ago, and he was in. I think they was having 
just before West Ham turned the corner, got themselves together and yeah. the European. And he said to me, I'm getting fed up with talk sport. They're doing this stuff where they're turning around and, and the Scottish papers doing the same, saying a manager should be sacked for this and a manager should be sacked for that. And they should be do we're doing polls to see who you <laughs> and I said to him, and I, and I said to him, I've got to be honest, Moisey, for the amount of dough you guys get, get on with it. It's background noise. You call yes, it white absolutely. noise. Yeah. Get yeah. on with it. In the world that you live in, it... 30 years ago or 40 years ago when you landed as a manager if someone said to you you're going to get three or four million pound a year but you're going to listen to a lot of old nonsense sometimes from ex-players or the media giving you a load of, 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 of observations that you don't like but you're going to get four million quid a year for it <laughs> you'd have pulled their arm off at the shoulder wouldn't you yeah Still a lot less than the players, by the way. Yeah, and that's a different discussion, <laughs> but you would have done, wouldn't you? You would have pulled your arm yeah. off at the shoulder. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the era of the Premier League when it evolved was was like so great in terms of what they did for the world of football. These, well, I always say we're, we're, uh, the Premier League is an international league played yeah. in England. Yeah. It's, not, English, it's not the, the English, English Premier League. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's mate. an international league yeah. played in England. Yeah. And we're very fortunate to the have it. The only English thing about it is the geography of the clubs. Yeah. And what's happening in the game today is there's far fewer youngsters have the opportunity to become a professional footballer in this country than ever before because of imports. And yet, you know what I mean? the Premier so, League fight and argue and bitch and whine about the change of policy around the yeah, bringing over of players into this country. It's foreign owned. Well, I think it's because the talent pool as well, Isn't Sam. It? I think there's also no, an element the of our game pool, has evolved. But the talent because pool of would players. be much better if we had control in terms of the developing of our youngsters. Forget them about being at school if they're talented enough because the education system in the Premier League particularly can handle everything probably better than the school can. I watched my son take his son to Manchester United from eight mm. to 16 and, and and that was and watch him clock the thousands and thousands of miles up, mm -hmm. four nights a week, yeah, t till he was fourteen, and then four nights a week or five nights a week and weekends travelling across the country and playing. If it was in the school system, that's how I was brought up. Right. Then we would create much better footballers than actually having the parents just coming and doing a, a bit of training for an hour on a night time. And then you get parents who are, some are divorced because of it. Because mm. they can't cope with it. And they're so infatuated by the son becoming a footballer that they actually do this driving. And what about all the single parent mums that cannot do that? Mm. How do they get the son there? How do they, what but do it, they do? It, it, you know it, what I mean? So you can, so did you know that it's, we're at 90 percent 85 90 percent failure rate again of what players players from 16 to 21 yeah, yeah. But, but that's the reality of it Sam. Isn't yes it? i mean but, how are you going to get if you've got two and a half thousand footballers in in professional football and hundreds and hundreds of kids getting a look at the dream factory going into when i signed for chelsea when i was 15 yeah, yeah. we used to train on the back of the pitch at stanford bridge <laughs> mick leach the old qpr center forward right, yeah. was my coach yeah. right in this modern day and age the kids now are going into wonderful environments mm -hmm. where they'll be given the best opportunity to be able to get an opportunity to be a professional yeah. footballer and the hard fact of life is yeah, is that the most people won't be a professional footballer but we have but this, they'll get an opportunity to well, have a yeah, chance. But they get it. the education behind it. That's the beauty of it, though. Isn't yeah. it? A, but should be a better education, by the way. It should be more a more constructed education to make sure that the fallout. Because unfortunately, we're on the wrong subject here. We've strayed, and I do this often. But it's all right. there's a lot of people commit youngsters actually committing suicide. I know. COVID. I know. You know what I mean? So what, so, you're, what you're advocating you know, for? You're advocating is for a better passage of when the system doesn't take them where they want to go. Yeah. That it doesn't just drop them. No, but if we want more success, then, uh, listen, because we're so academic today, I call being a footballer a master's degree. Right. You you have to be a, you have to hold a master's degree to play in the Premier League. Or you have to be at the top of your trade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because everybody talks about exam results, don't they? Mm -hmm. So we have to make it, in terms of talking about everybody's, you're, if you become a footballer, you're a Premier League footballer, you're as good as the top person that comes out of Oxford University. You should having be. Having passed yeah. his maths. Yeah, you should be. Yeah. In, in yeah. reality terms, because yeah, that's, be, yeah. yeah. that's why you're playing there, because your brain that, is why you're playing there. In the skill that you're, you're skill that you've got. For, yeah. So I just get, I'm so passionate about football and nothing else that I don't want to see 
those chances for opportunities uh, di diminished more and more and more. And the other scenario is because we allowed yeah, the Premier League push so hard to the FA and the lower leagues, we allowed them to take them for a pittance of a money at 12, 13, 14, Absolutely. 15. Well, that, well, the FA doesn't govern the game, and the no. Premier League put in the elite so, player performance program correct. and yeah. took the piss out of everybody. Mm. And all the clubs in the EFL decided to vote for it because they wanted the two hundred and fifty grand of a solidarity right. payments. Mm. And all of a sudden, you're giving up young players with no compensation, without with any proper ability to reinvest back into the facilities to get more young players coming through. So don't 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 get me started on yeah, that. Yeah, but I'm we're, exactly we're, with we're this. Singing I'm on the, the same same in sheet because what happened to this is that the players much better and much more capable of going through the ranks at the smaller club quickly enough to get to a bigger club and get bought by a bigger club which then helps funds fund the, the smaller club to go on of course to the club. now a lot of kids a lot of them have give up and shut the academy down well, but, but then, i don't think brentford have but, an academy but then square this circle you get birmingham that sell jude bellingham for 35 million quid yeah. and the next day they close the bleeding academy yeah it doesn't make sense to me because one of the no. things for me that kept my sanity at palace was not the idea that I could go and buy footballers that would do me a favour yeah. to come and play for me, but to have Wayne Routledge, to have Victor Moses, to have Wilf, yeah, who good, you know yeah. very well, yeah, well to very have good. you know Ben Watson or Johnny Williams coming out of my academy and wanting to play for Crystal Palace. So you're, you're singing to the choir. Mm. Um, how important, in terms of the evolution of your of your image and the perception of you, was getting the England job? Do you think? I mean, England was the ultimate. I mean, it was the ultimate achievement. Yeah. And the ultimate, uh, the, the the ultimate. Here I am now. I'm not going to fail. This is a strange question because I don't think you can answer any other way. But yes. But do you think when you got the job, did you merit it? I mean, were you the best of an average bunch, or did you really merit the England manager's job at the time? Because I remember Brucey saying that he thought he was in for it. Pardew and his in, in being a president yeah, of his own Pardew, fan club. Yeah, Pardew got interviewed for it. Yeah. I know that. Uh, I know that for a fact. Like you mean. So I mean, yeah, I got it. What made him give it to you? Um, I think probably my interview. But what about that interview? Uh, presentation wise. But what would you have told England? Eng England guys that are sitting there, Martin Glenn and all those clowns. That I don't have a great deal of admiration for <laughs> Sam. Quite frankly, what are you going to do to improve? the current state of play we are where we are Men you're, you're mentally going... more than anything else because they went on a, a huge amount about about how, how the struggle they seem to struggle mentally about the fact that there was a you know there was a bit, bit on joe art wasn't there where he was over going, stimulated over stimulated yeah. going you know going a little bit yeah. away over the top like you mean so you know how to control your emotions as a manager yeah so when you're when your stomach's churning like and you're talking to the players and you're nervous, yeah. That the exterior is calm. And it delivers what it needs to deliver, and that and that comes over time and experience, and you get better and better at that, and then you get the sense of what you need to say or deliver at that particular period of time, but deep down inside you're still nervous and you're still. But if you show that that emotion or you show those nerves, people pick up on that, and you can't get the like best. A dog out. Feels, smells fear and bites. Yes, yeah, right? yeah. so yeah. so being positive about the England team and what the England team could achieve and the changes we could make together about this new this new era and going forward, like I mean, which was it's the most the most nervous I've ever been in my entire life because it's such a big as job, a manager, right? such a big yeah. job. Yeah, and and you know, believe you me, the wife that was the last thing she wanted me to do was take it. Not giving you a pass because I think sometimes you football managers, you know, are, are, are your own worst enemies. I actually felt it was the FA's fault, um, and I think I've said this to you before. If I haven't, I'm going to say it to you now. I think that 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 you would have crawled across broken glass. Have got that England manager's job, mm. and I'm not taking a piss out of you and saying that you shouldn't have, you, you shouldn't have got the right money yeah. for doing it. No. And I thought it was their job to make it clear to you in their contract that you don't do anything else. You don't have any commercial eng engagements anywhere else. Mm. You're the England manager. Mm. The only thing that you focus on is being the England manager. We don't want to see you doing any commercial endorsements. We don't yeah. want to see you talking on media channels. Mm. We don't want any of that. It's all England manager's job. And at now. If you don't want the England manager's job under that condition, then you don't take it. And mm. if you do, then Sam Allardyce 
would never have been sat in that meeting mm. helping Scott McGarvey or not helping Scott McGarvey, yeah, would true, he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, and, and by the way, it's, uh, I'm not giving you a pass no, for it. No, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't expect it. a pass because I still kick, kick myself today, even though I don't think it. I think they could have. I think they should have looked up. I think they, they, they should have stood by you. Yeah, me. I think that um, that in the contract terms, you're absolutely right. Yeah. But actually, on the day, all they needed to do was take a bit of time to realise how false it was. Right, because it took a huge amount of time for me to show everybody how false it was. But yeah. that's another story. But. And the other side of this is when they talk about salary, I reduced my salary by forty five percent to take that job for what yeah. I was earning. It some, but that's my point. That, precisely, that, it wasn't about that. Wasn't about the money. That no, was no, about, I know it wasn't. That wasn't but, the point but, I was making. But you know, anyway. But you know, the point I was making was, mm. and it was in defense of you, right? I, I, I think I, you you should have yes. known better. But yes. also, by the same token, they should have put but, you. In, they should have done their jobs better. It's not giving you a pass because you sat across me. It's what I've always believed. I believe that if the FA want you to be the England manager, they should lay the rules down. And if you don't want those rules, then don't take the England manager's job, which is yes. you don't do bugger all else. And then you'd have known, and then you'd, if you'd have done it, you'd never been able to have an excuse to say, well, I didn't know, I shouldn't have been there in the first place. True. And I've got to put myself in the way of a sting that ultimately has cost me my job. Do you think it badly dented your reputation? And have you ever recovered from it? Oh, I've never recovered, no. Right. I never will. It's always, what would I have done? What could I have achieved? Could I have done any better? Will I have done any better? What, you know, I should. But then but then you look at the past and I don't dwell on it too much. I think it's best not to. I, I've so got the same I actually, situation. I actually go, okay. It still comes into my mind sometimes, of course it does, especially when England games are playing in tournaments. But then I go, right, that's enough that of that. It, Let's hit, move yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and that, certainly the Crystal Palace... Uh, what Steve Parry said to me, what what a lot of rubbish, what a lot of crap that was, Sam. Yeah. Getting rid of you for that, right? I mean, I just can't believe it. He said the way they did it was the most distasteful, and I don't, I've got a confidentiality clause, so I'm yeah, not, I'm not sure going to ask you to remember. I think, but I when think I got could... to Palace, I was like, this is heaven because I'm back in football yeah. and it's going to completely absorb my yeah. mind 24 7 on trying to work away out to save Crystal Palace, like you mean. Yeah. So no, I remember watching and, it, and that was like I, I, I remember I remember watching it and observing on it at the time, mm. and I remember thinking at the time I felt I thought the FA had a change of mind about you, and I think they use it as an excuse. Mm. I think they I think this is gonna you're not gonna like this, but I'm gonna say it, and, mm. and I'm not in a popularity contest with you. I think they didn't think you were as sophisticated enough as they wanted you to be, and the media presentation that they wanted you to be an England manager of a certain culture and creed. And I think they used it as an excuse. Mm. And I think that they, they they threw you under the bus. They could have backed you. They could have turned around and gone, well, hang on a second. We'll take a pause here. We'll have a proper investigation into this. And we'll come back round in full circles and tell what and tell you that we're not going to be run by the media. We're going to be run by facts. Yes. But the, all the, the other side of that is, is that did I change too much that they didn't particularly like? So that might be true. And I, what I thought later down the line was did i do too much to some that upset them because well if you if you remember it, it, I, I i insisted on cancelling a friendly at wembley before we went to play our first game in the in the qualifiers because i said if you, if i'm coming to to meet the team for the first time and i have to play a game a friendly game at wembley three days before we play the most important game, one of the most important games England's ever had after the failure in the Euros. Yeah. I want to be together. I want to be together and I yeah. want the players need yeah. to get to know me. I want to get yeah. to know them. And that, that was maybe that, yeah. Ooh, you know, what started does setting it, it about, start, yeah. the, mm. and, and then I started changing all these rules. Mm. The one thing I regret the most is obviously that meet, meet it, Scott, of course. But, but that's life, Sam. But but, I mean, but not give it, not be given the opportunity to defend myself. Yeah. At the FA. But Listen, I mean, I'm in the same place as you, mate. I walked out of Palace having lose fifty million quid, and everyone telling me that I was a failure. I know the truth. I know the reality of what happened. I know the people that were beneficial from it. Your mate Parish and so on and so forth. Yeah. I've got to live with that. All right. And you live yeah. with it, and you go, that's yeah. not true. That's not fair. But do you know what? It's sometimes in life you take the ups and downs, and none of us complain when it's going our way. And, and and in the end, I lost my boyhood club, the club that my father played for, yeah. the club that I put my heart and soul in where I got things right and wrong, and you lost an opportunity to manage England. Yeah. Um, and I want to ask you about that because it will lead me into that now. 
you must be watching what's gone on. I can't help but be honest about my views. I think Southgate's the luckiest English manager to ever, God ever put breath into with some of the draws that have got. Yeah, I get it. He's done well. Yeah. He's done some of the things that you were talking about wanting to do, yeah, which yeah. is bring the media closer to the yes, players, get rid yeah. of the divisions. Yeah. And I'm assuming that would have been things that I you'd have thought about I think as he's well. the perfect personality for the FA. Yeah, exactly. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And I have to say, before I even got interviewed, the only reason I got the job is because Gareth turned it down. Is that right? Yeah. He told me so. Right. That's a strange one. So, that's a strange so, one. you know, Perhaps but, that, but that you know, don't that mean you had whatever people may or may not say about you. You had two or three top eight finishes mm. in in you're managing some of the biggest clubs around Newcastle being one of them, which is challenging football clubs. You had a domestic managerial career that gives you an England manager's job, gives you the right to be in the room, managing Middlesbrough and taking them down to the Championship and being an FA man. I, I don't know what I make of that, Sam. When you well, say he told it, you, it, how, did he, it, how did he tell you that? Well, we were just having a conversation because he was under under twenty ones yep. coach and all that. That they, they they asked him, and he said he wasn't ready, which I thought was was fantastic in terms of if you're not ready, you're not ready for that you? pressure. And that, and believe you me, that is the pressure you get. Like I mean, there's no pre more pressure in that job than the than the England manager's job, and uh, and he's he's building his way, finding, and I think that was a great decision by him because of his. He was looking at his lack of experience as a well, manager. Well, he soon was bleeding, really, because five months later he was well, in. Well, yes, well, yeah, he took it. Yeah. You know, and it, you, can't knock that. you can't knock him as a human no, being. No, I'm not, I'm not going to. You know, we can't knock him as a human being, but we can all look at, say, what comes with inexperience we may have seen mm. in, in terms of decision-making in the dugout. That is a crucial area of football, and particularly today, your decisions on substitution, particularly now we've gone up to five. Yeah. And tactical changes while the game's going on is a particular area that the longer you do it, the better you get at it. Cool, sure. And but, and perhaps his inexperience, because everybody's talked about Gareth's not. He's had three tournaments now, yeah. and, and 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 I'm not asking you to get involved in getting no, click, no, clickbait I'm not commentary, right? No, no, because no. I think you're old enough and wise enough to not yes. want to do that. Yeah. But I do think there's salient points, right? Because, um. Going into the first tournament in the World Cup in 2018, he gets an opportunity to beat the Croatians. We didn't beat anyone that we shouldn't have beaten. We beat everyone in that tournament we should have beaten. We yeah. got draws that other managers, you included, would have bit your arms off for. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. And you get to a semi-final, you're in control of the game against the Croatians in the first half. And you know the Croatians are going to get better in the second yeah. half because they couldn't and do anything else. Risk. But, right, yeah. right, until he, he doesn't change it. Mm. We get to the uh, European uh, Championship final and we are one nil up and he doesn't change it. If you were managing England when you're playing against Italy in the final of the Euros, what would you have done differently? Well, I'd do it a, a, a lot quicker. But you often find when the opposition score, the manager puts a sub on. Yep. And it's long. Well, that's, that's no good, is it? No, you're, you're reacting rather than being uh, proactive. Yeah, proactive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm I'm going, I need to put a sub on now because I need to stop this wave. Yeah. So a lot of my coaching is about like understanding yeah. When you're not in you're not having the best time, you should be you should be intelligent enough to change it yourself. Yeah. So somebody Rather should say the captain and say, look, let's tighten up for ten minutes. You know, forget about change the momentum. Forget about playing out from the back or let's get it in there and half yeah. push up and let's keep them there for a while. Because there's nothing worse than the tension you feel when the opposition get in your box. And it's building up. And I'm looking for information of the my right hand man. Or I'm looking for information from my sports scientist coach, who who's got to spot maybe a player that's tiring. That's his responsibility. Or the assistant manager goes, "Do you think you should change this?" And I go, "Yeah, maybe." Like you mean, give us. And then I te absorb that, and then go right. We're going to change this, and he'll go, "Why?" And I'll say, "Well, I think we're going to like that because it's going to control the game better, and it's going to get us in there, and it's going to get us back in the game a bit more." Because we'd be, we'd, if I don't change something, they're going to score. Gonna happen, yeah. They're going to score. Because yeah, that's the accusation I'm they're, making. They're going to score. I'm making about Southgate is yeah. that but we've got someone that's getting us to a certain position where we're not really, and I've got no personal issue with Gareth Southgate besides the fact his mate is Alan Smith who worked for me and I'm not a big fan of his. But as far as Southgate is concerned, you know, I, I think he's done a lot of good things. I think he's been brilliant with the media. Absolutely, but, yeah. Uh, and I think that's a really important part of the very, job, very, and you know that, right? Very good, yeah. Uh, and I think he's been great at getting yeah. some unison 
back into the playing squad and getting yeah. the players back on side where there's less bitching and whining about what they haven't got and more happy about what they have got. I'm not that refined, that's for sure, as Gareth. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. But but this this I think you're saying the same thing as me, yeah, which absolutely. is the proactivity to affect something before it happens. Because once it's happened, we can all bleed and see it. It's being able to prevent it from happening and changing the direction of travel. Do you think, when you look at the clubs that you've managed... And you look across Newcastle, because to me, speaking to Sunes, speaking to Brucey, and and had brief conversations yeah, with you about Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Do you look at it now and go, "Geez, Louise, why couldn't I have got my time at Newcastle now?" Not just because of all the dough that the Saudis are going to bring in, but because it would always appear to me, John Hall, I, I love very much and still do. But yeah. You had Mike. Was Newcastle the impossible job? Because Sunes thought it was. At the time. Well, maybe, maybe so, maybe so. I always remember Bobby Robson saying it has to be one of the hardest jobs I've ever had. And I didn't know whether Bobby was saying that because he was a Newcastle boy yeah. and the pressure that would be on him because he's a Newcastle boy or whether it wasn't. But, I mean, unfortunately, within two months or three months, the club was taken over yeah. by Mike, which is the quickest takeover of a football mm. club that's ever happened because... Mm. He, in his own words, he didn't do any due and, he wasn't, and you weren't his man. And, it, and I won, in the end, I wasn't his man. Mm. And and all of a sudden, that money never materialised. Yeah. So I ended up like I was at Bolton, looking around for free transfers and loan players, which is never never going to be good enough for Newcastle United. Right place, wrong time. Right place, wrong time. So, Talk to me about Leeds. Why would you take the Leeds job? I mean, I mean, I sort of sat there. I was, I was aghast at it. Was saying when I see, I see they're going to pay you three million quid for keeping them up. I was like, hold on a second here. Well, that's always got to be a bonus for doing that. How oh, much money are you saving the football bloody club? Bonus. But, but I mean, it's what made you take the job? Four games. Get back on the training Four ground. Four games. And I knew I, I asked them to take me twelve games before that. I rang up Angus and said, "Take oh, right, me. Okay. I'll save you." Right. Right. And Victor, who was a director Victor of football also, then, yeah. who appointed Garcia, obviously made. He made some mistakes, mm -hmm. obviously, along the way, because they sacked him. And then just uh, Angus just said, can you come? Will you do it, please? Would you have kept him up if you had those games? Because there was a point oh, they no, were all I, over I, the place. I, so I, think, I think we'd, we'd, it would have been touch and go. Yeah. But I think we'd have been really close. We were really close in the four games because in the game against Newcastle... Yeah, that was the moment, wasn't it? We, that was the moment. We we should have won that I game. I know you should. We, we missed a penalty. Bamford missed a penalty. Up. Could yeah. strangle him. We give two penalties away, yeah, and we got a lad sent off, and we still drew, drew no, two. two. That was the moment, wasn't it? And that was that was the changing moment. There's another changing moment that you can't talk about that nobody actually thinks of actually happens, but there are other co things you can't control. So West Ham, two of the three goals were half an inch onside rather than half an inch offside. These are the margins. But that aren't wasn't. They? That wasn't the ultimate. The ultimate was in the first half an hour, we should have been 3 0 up. And so it always came back to bite us that one is we don't defend very well. We didn't keep a clean sheet since last February, and we can't score goals when yeah. we create chances. Now, the proof of that was at the end, the last game of the season, and we'd planned so hard and did, done so much to try and make sure we contain Harry Kane and Son that that would give us an opportunity to win the game. Now, had we contained Harry Kane and Son, Leeds stats at the end of the game, what? 11 shots at goal, four goals. Our stats were 21 attempts at goal, mm. two on target. So actually, in fact, we hadn't played that bad. Yeah. In no, statistical I I terms. Him. But in terms of what Harry did to us, and the shambolic defence. Yeah, it was but, a Newcastle game. The Newcastle I mean, game changed the direction of travel. I mean, right. I, I remember watching. Right. I remember yeah. watching the Man City game, thinking, "Jesus Christ, Patrick Bamford's got a fifty-piece head." Will he hold the ball up, know, for crying out loud? <laughs> hold the ball up, let him get yeah. out for five minutes, yeah. and then watching the Newcastle game and seeing that moment and thinking, "He puts this penalty in. You're in. You're in. You're in control of your own yeah. destiny now. There's yeah. a different landscape coming." When you took the job, was it one of those where it was a job with nothing to lose? And well, you've always got your reputation game. that you've got them, you, you've got them relegated, but not too many who are sensible people would actually say that that's that's. Again, they'd probably say that more about more about West Brom than they would about New, uh, Leeds, because I had a I had a long time at West Brom. Yeah, but, but yeah, nothing but, to lose in the Leeds job, no, isn't it? No, yeah. nothing to lose in yeah. the Leeds job, and it's Leeds United. Simon, it's, it's yeah, it's, I know. 
You well, know what I mean? It's well, Leeds you United. Stay, United it's like, did you only take it if you were staying in the Premier League? Because uh, Roy Keane says, nah, 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 nah. He's not going to take the job in the Championship. His ego won't let him do it. If it's, it's, nothing, it's, nothing, it's nothing to do with my ego. It's to do with the, uh, I choose. I choose what I want to be. But it's Leeds. Yeah, but no. When you want to get back yeah, up again. Yeah, but I choose whether I'm going to get Leeds back up again. Right. And, so I, and under the circumstances that I saw in a short period of time, I thought it was going to be hugely difficult. Right. And the two factors of not staying is, do I think there's enough goals up front for Leeds? If they kept all the players, probably. But if they'd have altered the Probably, program. yes. Do, defensively, you're definitely going to have to lose some players for the financial reasons. So, and I so I thought, well, you know, let, I actually advocated Carl Robinson and, and Robbie Keane to stay. Right. And of course, I wasn't sure about the support I was going to get at the top because of the, the change the, of ownership. The, the change of ownership mm. uh, was going to happen. When was it going to happen? How long was it going to take? And it, in my opinion, it's taken too long. Right. So, you know, the new manager just coming in now, they've started training. Mm. You know, wh how long is it going to take? He might do a brilliant job and get, get him going straight away. We'll only find that at the start of the season. But, it, you know, I choose, I choose that. Uh, like many others, categorise me in the fact that I'll come in and save you and then I'll leave. Do you accept that role? Do you accept do that now, role? Yeah, you accept yeah. it, well. Yeah, I do. Now, You're yeah. comfortable with it? Yeah, because because I don't... I, 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 the years Doesn't bother years, you at all? No. The years no. and years I've had the aggravation, Simon, of spending the entire summer going around trying to get players to sign on, to re-sign players, to, to sort the pre-season out to do the travel to get where we're going to go what are the hotels like what's the food like when are we going to go walking around on holiday and the missus saying are you ever going to put that phone down are you ever going to are you ever, what's the point in coming abroad and having holiday when you all you do is get on I mean at least the last few years because we're flying on a private jet yeah, darling know, to the yeah. best parts of the world yeah. because I'm a well paid football manager <laughs> how about that well that's very true but, tell me this you know, um this um press conference because I sat there looking at it again it was great wasn't it what the fucking hell are you on about Sam no, it's I, I think I'm Elon Musk right but I'm not yeah. right so what's this about what was the mentality what was the well, the mentality about was about, born out of I know I'm, the, I'm as good as any of these managers out there we had a good laugh about it after because I was speaking to Carl and he was laughing about Yeah, he said he said, he said it'll be amazing to see how many people how many people will take it literally and I said there'll be a lot There'll be a lot who are daft enough to not read between the lines. So Alex Ferguson always said, "Your big hero, pictures yeah. of him on your desk." Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When you're in trouble, divert the attention onto you. And these players, when I first got in, we'd only got there Wednesday. We were playing Man City away, which is a bit of a free throw when it Man City away. Yeah, the players were so dejected or looked so dejected mm. that there was barely a smile. After the Bournemouth result, they would yeah, be, wouldn't they? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Barely a smile, barely, a, you know, and I don't want to talk about the previous manager so much, but like talking Spanish most of the time right. is not a, a good environment for, you know, communication. All and, the players yeah, that yeah. can speak <laughs> English. You know what I mean? But anyway, we had to pick the players up. So I thought taking the pressure off the players by. Creating a headline, like, I mean, I'm good at creating headlines sometimes for good or bad, but creating a headline, I knew it was going to be splashed. And of course, it it made the press really easy, didn't it? Redirect, yeah. They were going, oh, I thought, thank God, thank God Sam's come back with a, a with vengeance. A bang, yeah. I thought you bang, were, here we go. I thought you were doing it. My take on it was, was I didn't take it literally. I didn't think it was a, a, an assertion or an observation that you were up there with Guardiola or Klopp. No. Right? I thought what you were doing was announcing to the dressing room that you were there. Yeah. That I am Big Sam, and I'm here, and I'm as big as they get, and I'm bigger than this dressing room, and you guys are going to follow me, and that's well, what I well, thought it was in part. Well, I, I I think so, yes, and I have to say the re response, the results, obviously in the end extremely poor, but the response that me, Carl, and Robbie got, and and I've never worked with Robbie before. He's a nice lad, isn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah. But not just his personality, but as his coaching techniques, certainly with the front men, yeah. hold a lot of credibility mm. to the players that were there because mm. they know what he is as a player. But, but also his session would Carl, outstanding manager. Yeah. By a, is he? By a million miles yeah. an outstanding manager. 
and it gets carried away with himself sometimes. Yeah, I've had a couple of runs with Carl. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah. we all do that. I say, but uh, and I and I, you know, I think that um, he's been like a lot of English managers that you, you know, you say that uh, don't work hard enough and all that, but people like that do that they do. But because we're dealing in a world of agents, they haven't got the right agents. Maybe they, they need the best Maybe. agents. I mean, I have the, agents the amount of agents that are tied in with the jobs with directors of football. No, and I understand that. I don't, I don't, I don't, go down, the, I don't go down the route of what you've said before about being Sam Aladachi and you'd have got a top six job and this, that and the yeah, other. Yeah, that's good. That's good publicity. It's good publicity, it? but it's, yeah, it, and that makes people like me look like I'm a lazy, bone-idle arsehole that would only get a football manager from abroad yeah, because it's easy it, to yeah, do and it's not true. A lot of it, a lot of it is actually, is now, now we have to, we're the only country that don't look after our own. I don't disagree with that. You I know what I mean? Yeah, you I, go I across the LMA. Sometimes that's the LMA's the, done the research. We they, they they will not do what we do in any other country in Europe by allowing uh, uh, allowing every na every coach and every nationality across the world. So we are the most multiracial, multi talented group in this country, better than anybody else in the world. So I can't understand why anybody complain about not being a manager or not being given a chance because you have to be, earn it and you have yeah, to I carry agree. on to get it. If I hadn't done all I did, because I, I grafted mm. for years and years and years to get where I got. I didn't just, it didn't just come. No gave it to you. It just started, yeah. you know, it ended up at Limerick. It ended yeah. up at Preston as youth team coach at Blackpool. It ended, you know, it, it I got, turned, yards. I got turned down for Northwich, Victoria, Kidderminster areas mm. when I sent all my CVs out and nobody responded. So I didn't go around whinging that I don't didn't get anything. No. I just carried on mm. and took the job to stay in, in, in relatively in football after losing my job at West Brom, actually taking a job in Ireland, which is which is the last place I really wanted to go, but it was the only job I could get at the time. You know, so do the graft, do the yeah, hard, I think lot, that's right. hard lot. Hard yards, and if you keep going somewhere you'll along the line, you'll get there yeah, again. Absolutely you know? right. Last question: What would you like people's lasting memory of, of you in football to be? De dedicated, good at his job, and uh, enjoyed ev every every single minute of it. Like you know, but the only people that really know that are the people who've worked for me. Yeah, but they haven't worked for me; they've worked with me. Worked with you, you know, so they know who I really am. Um, other than that, nobody else does. Nobody else knows the real me on the other than them about uh, how much fun we have. And we're serious when we need to be, but we do have some fun. Sam, listen, I've enjoyed it. Not a hint of arsehole clevery for no, me. No, no, fine, no problem. Thank you for being so upfront. Pleasure. Enjoyed it very much. Yeah, cheers. Upfront with me, Simon Jordan, is brought to you by William Hill. Future episodes can be found on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. 18 plus, please gamble responsibly.